Amen. While you're turning there, Song of Solomon, the sixth chapter, let's open up in prayer. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you, Lord. We give you praise and we give you glory. We thank you that you and you alone are worthy. You are the only one that deserves our praise. Lord, you deserve continual worship. And Father, we pray that, Lord, our voice would be heard, that the rocks would not cry out here today, but that, Lord, our voices would be heard as we give praise and glory to Jesus Christ, our risen Savior. Lord, I pray that you're, you would anoint this word this morning. I pray that you would give me the words to say. I pray the enemy would be under our feet. He would be bound. And I thank you for the Holy Spirit. May you go forth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Song of Solomon, chapter 6. Song of Solomon is a love letter. It is written... Between Solomon, it was written by King Solomon, but it is it is written as a love letter between Solomon and the Shulamite woman. A woman who is chaste and pure and is devoted to the king. And in this letter, it is a type of the bride of Christ and Jesus Christ. We know that the church is referred to and called as being the bride. We know that Jesus reflected in Matthew chapter 25 and he gave a parable of ten virgins, five foolish and five wise. We would see where there is this type of that we are as a bride who is waiting for her husband to come and to, to take us to that great marriage supper of the Lamb, and, and we're waiting in anticipation. And so this is the type of this. And it says in, in the Song of Solomon, chapter 6, we're going to ver read verse 8. It says, There are three score queens and four score concubines and virgins without number. Verse 9. My dove, my undefiled, is but one. She is the only one of her mother. She is the choice one of her that bare her. The daughters saw her and blessed her. Yea, the queens and the concubines, and they praised her. Amen. What I want to draw out of for this text this, this morning is, is the very first line of, chapter, of, verse, of verse 9. My dove, my undefiled one, is but one. She is the only one of her mother. Amen. God has taught us in his word that the bride of Christ is an elite woman. She is pure. She is devoted. She has separated herself from all others. And what I want to give to you this morning is that simple thought that you are the bride of Christ. And we are to separate ourselves and be as that one peculiar bride. Solomon says that when I looked, I saw a whole slew of beautiful women. I saw that the, 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 the land had produced the very greatest of them all. They all came together. And you might want to reflect on the story of Esther. Maybe we would recall where the, the king was looking for a new queen. And they went out and they gathered all of the beautiful virgins to be, to be queen. But there was none like Queen Esther. She stood out amongst the crowd. And that is the way the bride of Christ is to be today. We are in the midst of a fallen world. A world that is polluted, has corrupted herself, and the bride of Christ is to stand out as the one who has separated herself and is pure and true. And Solomon says that when I looked and I saw all of the beautiful queens and all of the beautiful virgins, he goes, my dove, she was the undefiled one. There was only one in the whole entire crowd that I could see. She was the one set apart for me. Amen? She was the one that had kept herself pure in the midst of a wicked and perverse generation. And such is 
the bride of Christ. Washed herself in, the, in her robes in the blood of the Lamb. She has been devoted and set apart for King Jesus. Though this world has produced many idols and produced many things to lure us away, the bride of Christ keeps her eyes on Jesus. She has kept herself pure. She has kept herself unpolluted from this world. She has kept herself chaste. And when all the world was seek to pollute it, she has shut the door in their face and says, there's but one for me. I am keeping my eyes upon Jesus. He is very soon to come. He is very soon to split that sky. And I am looking and waiting for him. And Jesus says the same. In the midst of all of the world, of all of the people, there is but one. My undefiled one. The one that has kept herself for me. And that is what you and I are to be for Jesus. Undefiled. Kept separate. And the Bible would tell us in 1 Corinthians that we are to not be unequally yoked with, together with unbelievers. We are to be a chaste and pure bride. Amen? We are to be someone who has been set apart for the Lord's work and for what He would desire to do. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26 and 27 says this, that He might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the Word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Amen. When we look at a, a, a marriage today, a wedding today, it is the bride who adorns herself in a beautiful dress. She adorns herself in a white apparel that symbolizes purity, that symbolizes separation, and in that tradition of that wedding garment, that, that dress that is, that is picked out, it is considered to be uh, uncouth or uh, to not be a proper etiquette for anyone else to wear white on that wedding day. She alone is to st stand out as the undefiled one. She is the alone is to be the star of the show. That when, she, when, when the groom steps out from the, behind the curtain... And everyone arises and stands up. And here comes the bride walking down as the father presents the bride to the groom. You, do you see how the, the marriage ceremony is a type of what Jesus Christ's word has presented to us? That was not done without honor. That, there's a reason why the marriage of a man and a woman is done in such a way. It's based upon biblical principles. The father is going to present the pure and spotless bride to his son. And the son steps out from behind the curtain and is standing there waiting for his bride to come to him. She has adorned herself in white. She has dressed herself in purity. And it is all a type of us today spiritually. You and I are the bride of Christ. And we are wearing white Garments washed in the blood of the Lamb. They weren't white on our own accord. But they have been kept white by the blood of Jesus. Sanctified. The righteousness of Christ has been clothed around us. And the Father will one day come and stand out. And will present His bride, the undefiled one. As a, as a pure and spotless, glorious church. It says not having spot or wrinkle. It has kept herself undefiled from idols and from the pollution of this world. And I want to give to you this morning, the world is seeking to defile you. The world is seeking to corrupt and to taint. But it is that which God has chosen. It is that which God has sanctified that He has kept aside. The remnant, the undefiled one, the pure one. I want to encourage you today to keep yourself pure and unspotted from this world. What is, what is the pure religion, James says? Pure religion and undefiled is to keep yourself unspotted from the world and to visit the fatherless. That is what God has called the church to be, is to be a pure and spotless bride. One that in the midst of a whole slew of people, he has eyes but for you. You alone stand out to him as His chosen one, that He has selected as His, as his love. And that is what Song of Solomon is, 
is being recorded as. It is a type of a, of a letter, a love letter between a, 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 a groom and his bride. She has kept herself. She is waiting for him. And he has been on a long journey, Jesus would say. But there's coming a time, a day, where he is going to return. Amen? Amen. And that is the day the bride of Christ is waiting for. And that is why we need to be alert today. Don't be asleep. Don't be like the foolish virgins who have not prepared and have oil in their lamps. Don't be like the foolish ones who they look like they're undefiled, but they are not in the right way. But the wise had oil to spare. They had brought extra. And when the midnight cry was given, it was they who went in unto, the, unto him. But the five foolish were shut out. The undefiled ones have kept themselves pure. They have saw that Jesus is worth it. Amen? Amen. And I want to encourage you today, whatever you, this is what Paul says, whatever you lose in this life, whether it be mother, father, son, daughter, neighbor, lands, fortune, inheritance, whatever you might lose in this life, Paul said, I count it like manure, dung, Poo. It's the filth that I might gain Christ. If I win Christ at the end of this life, I have won everything. And anything and everything that anybody else might think that they have sought their whole life to gain. I mean, there are, are, are people who have buried other people just to get a dollar. Just to make it a little closer in this world. Just to get the window that has the sunset on it. They... They'll do whatever they have to do to get one step ahead in this life. But guys, when life is over and they stand before God and they realize they have lost it all, what have they gained if they've gained the whole world and lost their soul? But the bride of Christ is undefiled. She has kept herself pure. She has forsaken land and loved ones. She has done all that she's had. I, I, I knew a person once. She had felt as though to live a godly life, she was losing out. She was going to lose out the party life. She felt as though if she lived a godly life, that she would never know what it was like to, to be able to be up all night and, and, and go to the prom and go to the party and to be able to be the, 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 all of these things that the world deems as great. All those songs that they tried to deceive people to think that that's the way of, lo of life. She thought, if I live for God now, I'll never know what that's like. Well, praise God if that be the case. You've not lost. If you, if you don't know what the world's like, you're blessed. Because the world only leaves you left empty. What a, what, what a twisted way of thinking for that child. To think that she would want to give up Christ. So she could experience life down here. So was the story of the prodigal son. He said, Lord, give me my inheritance now. I want to know what this life of righteous living is like. I want to know what it's like to, 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 to be in the party life. To, to, to have all the friends. And this is what he did. He took his inheritance and he went. But it said after all of his money was spent on, on riotous living... He had nothing left. And guess what? The friends left too. He was left with nothing. And so he got a job feeding pigs, which he was a Jew, so that was such an unclean, unholy thing to do. He was defiled. He had left all of his father's living. And now he was feeding pigs. And he was so hungry that he thought the pig slop looked appetizing. That's where sin takes us. That's where sin will leave us. To where we're eating pig slop. And the young man said, even my father's servants eat better than this. They have cleaner clothes than I have. I'm going to come. And it says he came to his senses. He said, I'm going to come back to my father. I'm going to beg him to just let me be a slave. And I'll live better than I'm living now without him. And so he left. The story of the prodigal son is that the father saw his son afar off coming down the road. And he ran to meet him. How many know the father loves his chosen? 
He hasn't abandoned you. You might feel as though you're like that prodigal son sitting there in pig slop and that you have been defiled and that your garments are made of filth and you don't feel like that undefiled one. But let me tell you today, you can be made pure and holy by the blood of Jesus Christ. We are all undefiled. We are born into sin and we didn't become pure and spotless out of our own accord. We were washed in the blood of the Lamb and the righteousness of Christ was clothed upon us. And it says that while the father saw him running, or saw him afar off, he ran to him. He took off his own coat, put it upon his son. He took the ring off his finger, put shoes upon his feet. And he said, go kill the fat calf. My son has come home. It's time for a celebration. And they threw a party because his, his long lost son had finally come home. And the Bible says that the good son, the son had always been loyal was wroth and angry. And he said, I have not ever left you. I have been there this whole time. And yet never once did you ever kill a fat calf for me. Never once did you throw a party for me. And the father said to him, but son, you, you have everything that I have is yours. But my son was dead. But now he lives. My son was lost. But now he's come home. And that is the will of the father is to seek and to save the lost. Amen. The undefiled one. He has eyes only for you. He's calling to us today. His chosen. His pure and spotless bride. I want to give you two things in closing this morning. If you are struggling to hold on, if you are struggling in the midst of a perverse generation, I want to encourage you, the only way you're going to make it is to keep your eyes upon Him. Amen. When you have your eyes upon Jesus, all of the flash and the glamour of this world looks more and more filthy. Yes. And you realize that it will not satisfy your soul. Amen. You keep your eyes on the crown. Amen. And one day, He'll open up His arms and say, Well done, my good and chosen servant. And that's the day I'm looking for. Amen? Amen. Amen. But the other thing, perhaps you've been like that prodigal son. Whether you're here today or you're watching this later over the internet, you have been like that prodigal son. And you have found that your garment that were once royal have become tainted and polluted and filthy. And you don't know how you got to this place, but you don't feel like the undefiled one. I want to tell you right now, Jesus is calling. There's forgiveness in Jesus Christ. He has arms open wide. He's looking for you. Years ago, I'm, I mean, I'm probably 20 years ago or so, I was at a Christian bookstore. There's a song written entitled When God Ran. And it was written by, or at least it was sung by uh, Phillips, Craig, and Dean. I don't even know if they're a, a group anymore, but Phillips, Craig, and Dean. And I remember at a... Christian bookstore, and I like Phillips, Craig, and Dean, so I was looking for the their new release. I found it, pulled the CD, and I, I seen that was reading the titles, and it said "When God Ran." And immediately, the the check in me was always, "Is this is this biblical? Is this right?" And when I just seen the title, "When God Ran," I immediately thought, "Now that ain't right at all." Because God don't run. And what does he mean when God ran? And as I started to listen, because I don't know how it is anymore, but you could preview the song in there and put on earmuffs and listen to it. And that's what I was doing. And it was about the prodigal son. And it said when God ran. God saw his son long down the road and God ran to him. That's the only time that God ran, was when He ran to you. When He ran to, to, to go and put His robe around you. To put His ring upon your finger. To put shoes upon your feet. That's, that's the extent of God's love. That's the extent that God has for you. The undefiled one. If you bow your heart with me this morning. Whichever way you might feel like you are, whether you feel like you are... Not as undefiled as you ought to be. Cry out to Jesus right now. 
It isn't no special ceremony that must be done. He's looking for the humble, contrite heart that just cries out to Jesus and says, Jesus, I know I'm not where I should be. I know I am that prodigal son. I found myself defiled in hog slop. I found myself not where I should be. Forgive me. I repent now and I come back to you. And let me tell you, God doesn't have his back towards you. He's looking down that road. He's the father that every morning looks down that road to see, is there someone coming that's familiar to me? Is he in the distance? But praise God when Jesus gave that parable. There was a morning where the father looked down that long road and he looked to see, is, is there a familiar face coming down that road? And he saw his beloved, the undefiled one in his eyes, who was returning. And God ran. He ran to you. He ran to me. That's how much God loves you and me. The bride of Christ kept herself pure, washed in the blood of the Lamb. Call upon Jesus today and He'll clothe you in His righteousness. He'll wrap you in His love. He'll take off His royal ring and put it upon your finger. He will restore what you've lost. Put shoes upon your feet. And there is a marriage supper of the Lamb that is soon to come where Jesus Christ, the great groom, the King of kings, the Lord of glory, Imagine this. Listen to this. God sent His Son because He loved you. His Son was brutally murdered and gave His life upon a cross as a sacrifice because He loved you. And now He's calling and beckoning. He's looking down that long road for you to return because He loves you. And there's going to come a day where Jesus Christ, the King of glory, is going to serve you a meal. Because He loves you. What love that God has for you. His undefiled. I want to encourage you today. Keep yourself unspotted from this world. Keep holding on and looking to Jesus. That's the crown of righteousness. And if you feel as though you are, uh, ha have slipped and fallen, call upon Him right now. And He promises that he'll pick you up. Father, I ask you right now that you would touch every one of us. Lord, every one of us have fallen short of your glory, even within this hour. We have fallen short of your glory. We have sinned. We have failed you, Lord. So I thank you that it is not in my own righteousness that I come. For I have no robes that are pure. Of my own, I have nothing of value. So I come and I fall at the cross of Christ and I say, Lord, forgive me. I trust that Jesus purchased me in His own precious blood. And now I come in the, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. I come clothed in Jesus. I put on Christ daily. I am crucified with Him. And by faith, I trust that my garments have been washed in His blood. And I thank You that because of Jesus, I can say I am undefiled. Because of Jesus, I can say I am pure. Because of Jesus, I can say that I am worthy. All because of Jesus. I thank You, Lord.